we are 72 hours away from the Diablo 4 campfire chat. And I've been asked this question a million times ever since it's been announced that this campfire chat's happening. Do you think they're going to fix the game? So I wanted to create a video on this. But first of all, let's just let me say, if I would have it my way and I could snap my fingers, personally, I would have the game fixed because for me, having more games to play gives me more content and more enjoyment. And I would l love nothing more than Diablo 4 to reach its potential. That's just me. However, it makes no difference to me. There are other games out there that I'm enjoying and playing right now. So at the end of the day, whether it's success or not, doesn't really impact me in one way or another. Ideally, I would love Diablo 4 to be a great game, something that I would love to play and get my hands back on, but I can't control that. But let's address the elephant in the room and the question that I'm getting asked repeatedly. <laughs> Do you think they're going to fix Diablo 4? What are they going to do? So the bottom line, let's get right to the punch here. Be prepared to be disappointed. And I don't say that lightly. Uh, I've taken a lot of time to think about it. And really, if you've watched my content since the launch of Diablo 4, and I have hundreds of videos on the journey that Diablo 4 has taken, all the ups and downs. If you've watched all my videos, it's one consistent message that I've kind of put in all my videos actually, and that's the fact that if you wanna understand what's gonna happen in the future, a good indication of that is how someone behaves in the past. So with that in mind, I'd like to explore and how I came up with my opinion that Diablo 4 March 20 campfire chat, be prepared to be disappointed because if the past behavior is any indication of the future behavior, be prepared to be disappointed, unfortunately. Now, I hope I'm wrong. I hope they knock it out of the park. I hope they put in the game everything that all the players want including myself that's what i'm hoping for but i'm not expecting that i'm expecting them to maybe get a w i hope it's not an l but somehow i believe they're going to land in the middle in true fashion when it comes to the past behaviors of this development team so just as a reminder, this was the communication with what the campfire chat was going to be about. And I've highlighted the major points. So basically, they're going to detail the massive itemization changes coming to season four. We'll discuss how affixes, item stats, the codex of power, and new in-game systems will change the way you slay and loot across both seasonal and internal realm. And... We're going to get our first look at season four, and they're also going to detail how to access our first public test realm, the PTR, which is only going to be available to the Battle.net, PC Battle.net users. So that's the topics they've said they're going to talk about on March 20th. So in order to demonstrate how I got to my position, I've included this little chart that I'm going to explain in a little bit, and that is... This is what helped me understand and come to the conclusion that on March 20th, I think we're going to be disappointed in what the Diablo 4 dev team is going to talk to about, talk to us about in reference to all those points that I mentioned previously that they're going to talk about on March 20th. Um, and so this is a popularity on the internet as far as a specific topic. And of course, we're talking about Diablo 4. And as you can see, the blue line that goes across the page peaks at one point and consistently goes down. That's actually whether people are looking up Diablo 4 or not. So it's it's a good indication of what's going on as far as whether or not a specific topic is popular. Um, so this is worldwide. It's the past 12 months. It's a web search. So people 
looking and talking about Diablo 4. And I will take you through how this past behavior indicates future behavior and why I've come to the opinion that I've come to. Um, so as you can see on the far left, you can see the peak 100%. And this was on June 5th, the launch of Diablo 4. As you can see, the popularity just peaked. It was 100% at its maximum. Everybody was excited. 10 million copies sold of Diablo 4. Activision Blizzard King, record sales, just blowing it out of the park. Everybody was excited about Diablo 4. And then Season 1 came on July 20th. Now, a lot of stuff happened between June 5th and July 20th, specifically not even 24 hours into the release of the game. They had the race to 100, and they nerfed the Barbarian and Rogue starting off on a already sour note, not even 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever it was into the game. Um, but needless to say, the game launches. It's very popular. A lot of people are playing it. But as you can see, the popularity starts to go down. And on July 20th, season one is about to launch. Now, I say is about to launch because probably the worst patch, I call it the killer patch, the killer patch of Diablo 4, actually. And that was on July 18th, patch 1.1.0A was released. And two days before the very first season of Diablo 4, they released the killer patch, basically nerfing everything in the game, the classes, all the builds, Everything got nerfed. That's why I call it the killer patch. I'm not the only one. A lot of people refer to this as one of the worst patches in a video game ever made. And I totally agree. It killed, killed the buzz going into season one. If everyone can remember that time, I know I do. It really killed the buzz going into season one. Anyway, that patch happens two days later, season one drops and as you can see there was a little bump uh indicated by the blue line and season one is off and running but literally days into season one people start wondering and playing and they're like oh my god our, my build doesn't do as much damage as it used to it doesn't feel as good as used to and then something that's been with the game since the launch you couple the lack of power with all the builds through the patch killer. And then the fact that the game doesn't have a lot of quality of life features players are looking for. A lot of miss, sorry, missing end game content. The game is boring. It's not fun. Lack of itemization. I can go on and on. That kind of starts getting more and more into the players' minds. And it was already plummeting from launch to season one. Well, the patch, plus now we're um, you know over a month into the game, players are realizing there's not much to do in this game. And now they've killed my character and it's not as powerful. So as just indicated by the blue line, after the initial peak and still... I want to highlight the the bump in season one is well below the reception of launch as indicated by the blue line. Um, we're still very low, not popular players starting to leave the game. But season one happens and it's an L, a big L. Everyone's disappointed. And this is correlated with, again, the blue line, as you can see here, plummeting, plummeting, plummeting. Now, Diablo 4 Dev Team launches their first season. The player base is dwindling and eroding. And October 17th is when Season 2 is supposed to launch. Leading up to this, you can see just player base eroding and eroding. Again, correlated with the blue line on this chart. But October 17th comes. They have campfire chats prior to it like they always do. 
Season two comes and there's a nice little bump, still nowhere, anywhere near where it was at launch, but there's a bump up in, again, indicated by the blue line. Season two happens and wow, the season of blood, vampiric powers, etc., etc. People are liking the vampiric powers. And there's new features in the game. Nothing to do with itemization, nothing to do with more end game content, but Season of Blood happens and players are happy. And there's a little bit of a jump, not only in the popularity of the game, but also with the player base. And everything is kind of good. So we'll give Activision Blizzard King a W with Season 2. And I don't think anyone can argue that Season 2 definitely has been the best season to date of the three seasons. Anyway, October 17th, Season 2 comes. But again nowhere near the popularity of when the game was launched season two comes on october 17th everybody's happy some players are enjoying the game some players have left and will not come back until they add more content to the game um, that again reflects the blue line that shows the popularity is nowhere near where it was during launch anyway fast forward to november 3rd and 4th BlizzCon happens, as indicated here. It's right on that line where I indicated on the arrow. BlizzCon happens, and this is where they promote the expansion coming in late 2024, the Vessel of Hatred, and also they promote Season 3. Okay, now there's no name at the time for Season 3, but the majority of the discussion at BlizzCon 2023 for Diablo 4 was around the Vessel of Hatred, so the expansion, and Season 3, and that Leaderboards was coming in Season 3. Now, as you can see, not really a bump at all in popularity. So why do I highlight BlizzCon on November 3rd and 4th? I highlight it because this was a major sales blitz, right? They just announced that Diablo 4 is getting an expansion and when we were getting the expansion, late 2024. Now, a lot of people were upset at the fact that it was late 2024, but some people were happy that expansion was coming and we take expansion to be a good thing. It's going to evolve the game. Um, but also season three, the leaderboards were coming and everybody was happy about leaderboards. This is a big population of the player base that really liked the leaderboards, but it didn't have any impact on the popularity of the game, as you can see demonstrated by the line here. So that's why I wanted to highlight it. So the game is dwindling, eroding. And as you can see, the blue line from season two to season three, the only trend that you can take from that image is the fact that it's eroding, eroding, and eroding. Now, the Diablo 4 dev team is looking at this and they actually have numbers that they don't share with the public. So they know exactly how many players are playing their game and they can see factually the erosion of their player base. They know how many players they're losing day by day by day but it's correlated with this line beside me on this chart. So leading up to season three, a season where it was promoted and marketed as the leaderboard season, we get a campfire chat before January 23rd, which was when season three was going to launch. And we are told that the leaderboard part of season three is not going to happen when on January 23rd, when season three launches. Therefore, in effect, what they promoted and marketed as season three, the gauntlet, the leaderboard season, uh, by the way, we're not starting season three with the leaderboards and gauntlets. Now, I'll save you all the drama, but as you guys know, the leaderboard gauntlet. So season three comes on January 23rd and we're told leaderboards gauntlets are coming. They're coming, coming soon. And actually the dates 
gets added to coming out on February 27th or February 13th. I don't even remember anymore. It's changed so many times. They end up putting it on their website and then taking it back and putting coming soon. It's just, it was a shit show. So we have no idea when the leaderboards are coming. The date gets published, then it gets taken back. It, it was a disaster. Bottom line is leaderboards don't come till March 5th. March 5th. <laughs> Unbelievable, right? Well, as you can see with this chart, from season three to March 5th, an erosion. Ero and actually, season three, when it launches, doesn't even make a blip on the radar on this chart. Again, cementing the fact that a lot of players are just, I'm done with it. I can't, like, this is all lies, no truth. It's just the carrot in front of your face kind of mentality. So I raise all this. There's a method to the, my madness here. I raise all this because, like I said in the beginning, a good indication of someone's future behavior is how they act acted in the past. And when you take that thought and you apply it to the Diablo 4 dev team, how have they re acted in the past will be a good indication of how they're going to act in the future. And this chart demonstrates the epic failure of their unwillingness to address the big problems and recognize what their player base wants. This chart represents their failure and their lack of knowledge of their players and their receptiveness to the feedback they've gotten. Look, this game can be fixed. Other developers have shown what and how a game can be made and developed and managed. They, Diablo 4, Activision Blizzard King have the resources, the money. They have it. They just have chosen to go down this path. So it's with that in mind that I say, be prepared to be disappointed with the campfire chat. They've shown us what they can do. They don't react well, and they have had no success with this game outside of a little W in season two. So I propose to you that the March 20th campfire chat is going to be more of the same because that's all we have to go on. Now, like I said in the beginning, I hope I'm wrong. I hope they get a grand slam and that they do unbelievable creative things with itemization and the PTR that we get all the access and that they actually take the feedback from the PTR and put it into the game. But again, if you look at their past behavior, that's not going to happen. Things have to change. And unfortunately, like this chart beside me, they haven't changed once all while this problem has faced them. Like it's in front of their face, all these issues, eroding player base, dissatisfaction of the game, a lot, a lot of bad stuff and comments happening to them, being told that this game needs to be fixed. In, in that, with that in all in front of their face throughout, as you can see, season one, season two, season three. They continue to march down the same path of mediocrity. And that's why, unfortunately, I feel March 20th is going to be another letdown. Now, I suspect there may be some wins. But when you put it all together and you look at it as a whole, I mean, as far as what they're going to implement and what they're promising, I think that's really, as far as concrete in the game, I don't think they're going to put much substance. What they may be able to deliver on and may get away with is this is what we plan to do. Because they're good on saying we're going to do this. Not now. 
going to take time. Things are complicated. So I don't have high hopes for March 20th. And again, I hope I'm wrong. But at the end of the day, for me personally, it doesn't matter. Like I would love to be able to play Diablo 4. Uh, it's just another game I could add to my repertoire. And of course, that gives me more content, more things to stream. So that would help. However, it doesn't matter to me because there's other games out there that I'm really enjoying right now. And at the end of the day, I can't control what the Diablo 4 dev team does. So um, I just hope for everybody's sake that they do get a grand slam and hit it out of the park. But only time will tell. Believe me, guys, this take, I hope I'm wrong on my take. I really, truly do hope I'm wrong. And that they knock it out of the park, but I don't have high expectations because their past behavior indicates that their future behavior is going to be mediocrity. Anyway, let me know what you think. I know there's a lot of speculation and I really wanted to wait till after the campfire chat to dissect it, but I'm just getting inundated with what my opinion is on what they're going to do on March 20th. And I don't know what they're going to do, to be honest with you. But I don't think it's going to be any good. That I do know. And that's my opinion. Again, hope I'm wrong. But let me know your thoughts. What do you think? What are you hearing? What are your expectations? I'd like to hear it. What? How are you evaluating this before March 20th? I would love to hear your comments and feedback on that. Anyway, thank you for watching, everybody. I do appreciate it. If you can like, comment, and subscribe, I would really also appreciate it. And as always, I hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.